this session, we're going to talk about operators and privilege sets in web control. I'm going to log into web control by typing in a username and a password. When I click the login button, web control, of course, verifies that that username exists and that I've typed in the correct password. It does one other thing also. Web control looks at that username and that password and makes a list of all the things I'm allowed to do within web control itself. In other words, each operator can be customized to allow it to do certain things or not do certain things based on the login. So for instance, as administrator, I can probably do almost everything in web control because I've been granted the ability to have complete control over the system. However, a different operator might not have certain privileges. For instance, you might have people who log in that you do not want to have access to the network tree, as an example. Or you may not want them to have access to download things. Well, all of that can be determined by associating privileges with particular operators in the system. And that's what we're going to learn how to do right now. So let's start by looking at the operator page on the configure tree. And you can see that I have a list of operators here. Okay, I logged in as administrator, but I could have logged in as any of these operators if I knew their password. Now, what do we see in the, on, about operators right away? We have this concept of privileges. I have associated the system administrator privilege set, a privilege set, with this administrator. I could have associated all of these other privilege sets as well, but I chose system administrator. Let's take a look at the privilege set page so we can get an idea of what that means. Privilege sets are simply groups of privileges, okay, one or more privileges associated in what we call a set. So what we've done is we've created a privilege set called system administrator that has basically every privilege in the system, and then we associated it with a particular log. And we can see the privilege sets can be very customizable. So for instance, the consulting engineer is going to have far less privileges in the system. We're basically going to allow them to access the system and browse around, but we're not going to allow them to make a lot of changes. The controls technician will have more privileges, of course, um, than what we would expect from something like a consulting engineer, but less uh, privileges than we would expect the system administrator to have. Okay. So what we've basically done is we've created these privilege sets, and then we've associated them with operators. Let's create an operator now, associate a privilege set with it, and see what the effect is. So let's go ahead and add someone named Jim Smith. Let's say Jim Smith just got hired at the facility. Now the name is what's going to show up here on the operators list. The login name is what Jim will have to type in when he logs into the system. I'm going to give Jim a password. And now what I could also do is I could check this box, and the next time, that, or the first time rather, that Jim logged in, it would force him to change his password. Then I, as a person who created the account, would no longer know his password, only he would. That's a pretty common security thing. Um, now the final thing is we're going to associate a privilege set with Jim. And I'm going to give Jim the controls technician privilege set. Okay. Jim is a new control technician at the company. So I'm going to click OK. And now Jim Smith has been created as an operator. Let's go ahead and log out of the administrator and log in using this new account information. We've now logged in as Jim Smith. We can see that we can do a lot of things in the system right off the bat because none of these buttons are posted out. For instance, we could navigate around and we see we have access to the geo tree. We see we have access to the network tree as you would expect a control technician to have. But look what happens to the configure tree. I have far less privileges here. For instance, I cannot I can no longer go to the operator page and change things like privilege sets. Okay, so what we've done is we've customized this particular operator so that he has access to the areas that he needs, but he does not have access to critical security areas. Now, coincidentally, I've landed on something called the My Settings page, and every operator has access to their own My Settings page. And this is where Jim can 
configure things for himself personally, such as his password. So he could come here and change his password. Okay? And he could change his start area. So for instance, let's say that Jim only worked in the Atlanta area. He could go ahead and change the start area to be the Atlanta area, and the next time he logged in, the login would take him directly to the Atlanta area instead of starting him at the Prestige Corporation page. Okay. He can also decide if he would like to be on the graphics page, the alarms page, the trends page, the reports page, etc. when he logs in. Uh, and we have a couple other things we can change, and we'll talk about this briefly. We can play the, uh, or change rather, the, the sound that we would like to hear when an alarm comes in for Jim Smith. And we can do a couple of things like our language preferences or automatically collapse trees as we navigate around. So this is essentially the My Settings page, and this is available to all operators of the system. I'm going to log out one more time. Right? And we're going to log in as the administrator because there's one more thing that I would like to show you that's associated with operators, and that's a couple global operator parameters that are available on the Configure System Settings Security page. Right here we have an operator section, uh, section rather, and we have the ability to log operators off after a period of inactivity. This affects all operators, but essentially what this means is if I have this checked, and I have this set to 30, it could be any number I wanted. After 30 minutes of inactivity in the system, the operator will get logged out automatically. And again, this is a, a pretty common security feature. Uh, another one that we have here is lock out operators for five minutes after three failed login attempts. Again, this is configurable. I could make this 30 minutes or 60 minutes after two or five failed login attempts. What this essentially means is if someone tries to log into the system three times, but fails to type the password incorrectly, they will be locked out of the system for five minutes. Now, if I made that 30 minutes, they would be locked out for 30 minutes. At any time, an administrator can log back in, click the clear lockouts button, and allow everyone access back to the system again. And that's essentially operators and privilege sets in web control.